it's not even love you know it's mm -hmm. just kind of functional dating yeah. there is love with his ex-wife mm -hmm. and with his kid for sure but that was oh. a love that just couldn't really it couldn't really continue for whatever reason but it's still there mm -hmm. in the way that it is it often that often is the case in those circumstances hi Aiden, how are you good yeah no i'm envious of your uh your backdrop there not well you know I'm envious it's recognizable i i know that's i know that that church dome i know that i know that guy <laughs> you know that guy speaking of uh, speaking of locations though i love how dublin is really like front and center in barber um yeah. you guys are really like filming like you know in real time on the streets what is that experience like and what are some of your favorite places to shoot in ireland that was a big part of it and i have worked with these uh, this director and this cinematographer a few times all stuff shot in Dublin and that's all their stuff not all their stuff uh, like Owen that my Poland the, the DP is off doing like huge stuff like he's shot a lot of the Apple series foundation and all that so he's kind of he's not just in Dublin now he's in space but <laughs> uh, and but he he loves shooting it and I love I love shooting on the street anywhere Um. And Dublin at that time, we had done uh, like a promo, like a five minute version of some of something like this, maybe three years previous. And uh, when we were driving around in the rain and filming the traffic lights with these whatever lenses we had, it was like, wow, this really does look like a, you know, proper noir mm. film. I haven't really seen it before in Dublin so that was a big part of what we were trying to do was present a, you know the type of a type of story that people are familiar with in a place they just haven't seen it before so there had to be plot I was I'm all, I was always about less less plot and more walking around but uh it had to have something to you know a honeycomb to, to hold it together but shooting at that time also was interesting because we were in the middle of uh, a pandemic mm -hmm. and there weren't that many people in the streets there were people um but it was who was there and the people that were there were there and they were there out of necessity so there was uh homeless people addicts cops uh seagull seagulls foxes and and a, and a strange energy because among us just being out to shoot um something to be back to to work after everybody not doing anything for six months or, or whatever it was to be able to to do that we weren't sure we were going to get the permit to do it but we did you know we we kept it we kept we you know we had adhered by the the rules and all the rest of it and a lot of testing and that was you know i think that cost half of what we had to to make yeah this. i can imagine we just to be out there it was uh fantastic and yeah no i do i do love shooting in dublin and i don't know how much I mean, we've seen it it's been seen on on screen you know uh not as maybe not maybe as much as i as i think because i'm i'm there you know <laughs> we, we wanted to give it that more that more thing mm -hmm. treatment absolutely and i mean that really comes across um i really also love because you mentioned like the plot is kind of like <laughs> the honeycomb but i love how we just like come into uh val's life like at the halfway point like he's already left the force we slowly learn mm. what happened between him and like eddie or between you know just like his adversarial relationship with yeah. his past uh yeah. was really interesting to discover so what was that like for you to step into all these like lived in relationships from like day one that's something that i don't think about but that I do think about I you know I think about it all in advance and then forget about it and uh I always like to try and you know when you're shooting a conversation assume that there's you've already missed a bit and you're dropping in halfway and sometimes we'll uh, just add a bit of dialogue before the the main dialogue always asking the director please don't use this because maybe it's terrible but it'll just it'll mean we're in the middle of something it's always I always feel it's great to cut into something that's already happening and cut away you feel like you're get you get more out of it you kind of get a sense of what came before what might come after and then it's on to the next bit but it kind of elongates everything in a strange way without actually doing it time-wise 
so to me, yeah, it wasn't a surprise because we said let's just have some some mystery here or some something that's not so clear about his family life or his relationships or who he dates or what he's in, you know what he's into and we, we wanted to try and surprise people a couple of times you know on, on that front mm -hmm. in terms of d d d uh, different romances that he had but he's not even that romantic that's the thing yeah <laughs> it's, not, it's not big romance it's kind of um it's not even love you know it's mm -hmm. just kind of functional dating yeah. there is love with his ex-wife mm -hmm. and with his kid for sure but that was a love that just couldn't really couldn't really continue for whatever reason but it's still there mm -hmm. in the way that it is it often that often is the case in those circumstances I mean speaking of you know his daughter that relationship with Kate is so touching and is like really like the biggest love story in the film yeah. uh what was it like uh you know off screen kind of like working together and really you know, like, because she, I think maybe more than anyone, her, she really informs your character and your arc throughout the film. Because people were, had to shoot in blocks and stuff like this, you know what I mean? We kind of shot a lot of stuff in, in you might have a four day intense time with, say, the character, uh, you know, who plays my old, co the cop buddy who's still, who's still a cop uh, in those bar scenes or whatever, or even the daughter family stuff, you'd shoot it uh, quickly um she was a great actor actually and open and uh quite yeah, raw um giving i never tried to i wouldn't ever try to overdo it though you know what i mean i'd still try and keep a bit of characterful distance and be the barber father as in he doesn't always say what he's feeling right and it's always great to watch other actors, especially other young actors who are, you know, doing stuff for the first or second time. Uh, you learn, you, you learn a lot. And um, yeah, she was sweet. She was really good. She was. Um, I also thought it was so fun that Camila Sullivan was was in it uh, for a little bit. Was that just like, were yeah. you guys just like having a lark one day or did that take some convincing to get her in there? Not really. I, um, it was really a case of, okay, we need a character who's a singer. Who do we know who's a singer? Um, <laughs> my partner's a singer. And we, the, the, the people who made the film are, for, are friends anyway, so we all know each other. And every, in fact, most of the people in this were uh, friends like Ashling, who played the daughter. I'd not met her before, but almost everyone else mm. were people that I knew or we knew because we had to rope our, rope our friends in to just get it done. Um, so no, nothing strange there. We had, I don't know if had we acted before, we'd kind of sang before and done all kinds of things. Um, you mentioned, you know, being friends with already working with uh, this crew, with Fiona Finiton, I assume, but mm. would you like to continue the story of Val, like have other cases? Because I think that he's, you know, pretty a pretty interesting dude. There was talk about that, actually. There was a bit of a bite from a TV company here. Um, so I don't know. It's, it's the fine, you know, finances, even on our national broadcaster here, they're pretty tight. And uh, if anything is a little too off the beaten track, they'll, they will may play it safe. Uh, I don't know. I've worked a lot of them myself on other crime dramas, and they've 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 done all right. But they're not as nuanced or as character driven or as just. I'm gonna say slow pace, and I mean it in a, in a good way. Mm -hmm. You know, this has a, a relaxed, ambling quality to it. Yeah. So the, yeah, so there has been talk of it, and it would work. I haven't really thought about it, other than it was mentioned a while back, and then it wasn't mentioned anymore. I might bring it up at the next our next yes. council meeting. Another project of yours that I very much have enjoyed was Kin, um, mm -hmm. and I know I mean presumably uh, your your arc has concluded, um, but oh, well. was, you, you, your arc has concluded on, on well, Kin. <laughs> but um, I don't know. 
Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You never know. Like, so how satisfied were you with Frank's ending? And if, I mean, I, I don't know if like season three is or series three is happening or what's going on there, but is there a chance for flashbacks for ghostly apparitions? <laughs> like, what are we thinking? We talked about that. I did another series here called Love Hate, which was in a similar milieu. And, uh, and I met my end in that, but I did appear later as, uh, a, well, you'd have to watch it to see, but it's an apparition, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, look, the the end of season one, I kind of died, and then I died again at the end of season two, so I don't think we're going to get away with it beyond that. Um, I think uh, contractually there was talk of flashbacks, mm-hmm. but I don't know if we're, if, if we're doing any more. But I was very happy with uh, the end. I had been talking to, always. I feel always when you come back to the, to the second season of something the especially if the first was written not with you in mind then the writer knows who's just what how they are and whatever then you're it's written with you in mind and it's always a completely different thing and you've got ideas that you can kind of just nudge in there if you're you know nice about it um mm-hmm. so as every <laughs> i was off working on other things a bit during that you know i hate to give away the nuts and bolts but I wasn't in it as much as I was m- meant to be, but right. um, so I was glad that, you know, to make it uh, to that point at the end of season two, because there was a character in there that I confronted at the end that everyone mm. was really rooting against. Um, I had an idea and it hadn't, it hadn't been written. So I had, I had two ideas of what my, what Frank's journey was. One of them I was playing quite a lot. And that happened, but so did the other one, which was, you know, a turn up for the books. I just hope everyone else was satisfied with their, it's just nice to get to do that in the last 20 seconds. People were, people in Dublin were calling me by my old character name from this other crime show I was in, uh-huh. a character called John Boy, right? So they were calling me John Boy when I'm walking in the street. And I love it when people call you by your character name. I used to hate it. And then I realized that actually that's a really, that's a compliment. You know, they, it means that they buy it and uh, it's cool. Right. So, so people, John boy, John boy, even though that's like nine years old <laughs> and the day after, it was only the day after that last episode of, of Ken, uh-huh. they started calling me Frank. Like literally I walked across town. I had to do something like early in the morning and about mm-hmm. 15, 20 people all greeted me as Frank. Oh, that's awesome. You earned it. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank I really you. enjoyed Barber and I love you in everything. So uh, thank great. you I'll, for I'll see, I'll doing see great work. Time, uh, <laughs> okay, thanks. Appreciate it. Bye. Have a great day. Yeah, bye.